Hey, this is actually an important video. Um, I'd like to give you a very brief but extremely important education on lenses that absolutely not a single other uh, website or photography forum board will give you the insight or education on. If somebody understand optics, it's blatantly obvious, but for a lot of people out there, they, they get extremely confused. It would... Uh, Kind of like being, because I have a little hot rod car. Yeah, it's really, really tiny. It's mostly comfortable, but it's not like riding in a giant Cadillac. Yeah, it's extremely lightweight, and uh, you really wouldn't want to drive a thousand miles in it, even though you could, but it's designed to meow, get down the road really fast and look really hot while it's doing it. When it comes to zoom lenses, and there's a reason why prime lenses exist. Now you think you understand something, but you, I guarantee you don't. And nobody mentions this. And this is specific about the uh, new uh, Fuji 16 to 80 millimeter lens, but it's not because it applies to all lens manufacturers, Nikon included. By the way, I'll harken back to you when the Nikon new 24 to 120 millimeter lens, the second iteration came out. There was a lot of controversy over it. There are two schools about this lens, okay? Two, very, very polarized. And the same is true on this new 16 to 80, which by the way, is also a 24 to 120 millimeter equivalent lens for the Fujifilm system. Now when the 100, uh, 24 to 120 Nikkor lens came out, the latest one, people either really, really loved it or they had a hissy fit. You know, some people were measure baiters. You know what that is, they're looking at the corners of every, I'm over here at 24 millimeter and my God, there's some decent vignetting and it's not extremely sharp. Yeah, and they do the same thing up around 120 millimeters. Now, if you bought this lens and you used it, a 24, this 24 to 120 millimeter lens, between the focal ranges of 30 millimeters and 100 millimeters, you'd be like, oh my God, this is the best uh, zoom lens ever created. And that would be a very, very accurate, intelligent, and logical assessment. But every lens manufacturer, Fujifilm, Nikon, Canon, everybody, they do the exact same thing. They actually have an optical design, which each and every lens is an optical design. Because there's like a million different ways, for example, this is a 16 millimeter 1.4. There's a million different ways optically you could design this lens. Same is true of zoom lenses. When they actually design it to give it more marketability, Yes, the key word is marketability. How'd you like it when I got my ugly face that close to the camera? What they say is, well, you know, this lens is perfect, like between 30 millimeters and 100 and 110 millimeters. But optically, we can make this lens uh, a 24 to 120. The issue with that is at the far end of either range of the lens, the 24 to 120, identically so is the case with the new 16 to 80 millimeter Fujifilm lens. And then by the way, this is the reason why prime lenses exist, okay? That we could actually stretch this lens out and give it more marketability. And then what happens is the people that can't see the forest for the trees, let me repeat that again, the people that are unintelligent, not that smart, less than wise that can't see the forest for the trees. You know exactly who I'm talking about. You might be one of them, possibly. They say, oh my God, I, I zoomed in a 400% at, at 24 millimeters and man, there's a lot of vignetting and it's not all that sharp. And the same thing happened right around 120 millimeters and definitely pretty bad at 124. Those are the people that complained a lot about that Nikkor lens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, the other people that actually have common sense, yeah, which is not very common anymore, they're like, man, this lens is incredible. And the truth is, is that both are right. The people that actually praise the lens are more accurate than the other people. Um, but if you actually, like, were to glue that lens, the 24 to 120, between 30 and 100, which is where it is, it shines, yeah? then, you know, you'd be extremely happy no matter what you did. But this is the same as true like kids. When you make them a sandwich, they want you to cut the crusts off the edge of the bread. The lens manufacturers, as a kind of a perfect analogy, what they do, instead of just giving you the bread part, you know, they're giving you the whole crust. And a lot of people don't like the crust. And this is what people are complaining about is the crust. They don't taste very good. But if you cut the crust, 
The same is true. The exact same thing happening now with a 16 to 80 Fujifilm lens as is happening. And, and Nikon does this. Canon does this. Everybody does this, and it is and it's extremely applicable to uh, zoom lenses, but it's also applicable to prime lenses where in which, for example, like some really, really fast lenses. You can buy like a 1.4 a lens, but it's only really good if you stop it down to 1.8. Or you can buy a 1.2 lens, like, wow, this lens is fast. It's like, yeah, but it's pretty crappy at 1.2. You got to stop it down to 1.4. In other words, if you want the perfect 1.4 lens, you got to buy a 1.2 lens. If you want the perfect 1.8 lens, then you got to buy a 1.4 lens. Because a lens that's 1.4 ain't usually all that great at 1.4. Sometimes they are. If that's like a really expensive design, it's really, really good also to at its widest aperture. Yeah. This is called stretching the limits of optical possibilities. And what it does is it enhances marketability. So right now I'm reading some people. Ah, oh, there's this fat, bald, tattooed guy. You know, he said the 16 to 80 is a perfect zoom lens. And there's no such thing as a perfect lens. But I said it, and I meant it. I had that lens for over a month. I actually cannot wait to get the 16 to 80 millimeter lens because that lens is awesome. The 16 to 80 Fujifilm lens is awesome. It's awesome. But there's not a single person on this earth with four brain cells that thinks that any 16 millimeter lens, including uh, any Fujifilm uh, zoom lens, including the super awesome eight to 16 millimeter or the new 16 to 80 millimeter is gonna come close to the epic tatas that is this lens, the 16 millimeter one four. To my opinion, my extremely educated and well-experienced position on the lenses is that this is Fujifilm's best lens. And of course it's not good for sports action and uh, wildlife, but it's great for a lot of stuff. Man, you can get really, really close with this lens, and it's just amazing. But everybody knows that if you want to... This is the reason why prime lenses exist, right? Otherwise, everybody's like, hey, why would I buy that? You know, I got a lens that covers that 16 millimeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, 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 why would I buy that lens? It doesn't make any sense. This comes pretty close. This is an 18 to 135. And this lens also has the same issue. I actually got a couple copies. This is an awesome lens. It's the 18 to 135, but it's pretty much perfect between the focal ranges of about 22 millimeters to 130 millimeters. But for pure marketability, the optical design is stretched, not literally stretched. In other words, the maximum allowability is that it is brought to uh, 18 to 135. Yeah, which means it's not insanely sharp especially it has a little bit of vignetting it uh, wide open at 18 millimeters. But that's the far range of the zoom lens. So all these people, it's kind of glass. People see the glass has uh, half empty and some people see the glass is, glass is half full. But when these uh, specific lens designs come up, as always happens, there is extreme polarization between people. I mean, this lens is amazing and they're right. And there's other people like, oh my God, the 16 to 80, Man, it's just got, it's got a little bit of vignetting at 16, and you know, it's not super, 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 super sharp at uh, 16 million. Where's my, uh, where's my uh, parrot puppet where it goes, is it sharp? I don't need to do that. People just, they can't see the forest for the trees. You have to understand what it is. When I actually judge a lens accurately and intelligently, I might add, by the way, with no affiliate links, because that means I got more credibility, you know, then everybody else is posting affiliate links, and I got more experience with more lenses, and I own all the Fujifilm X series lenses and GFX lenses. I said the 16 to 80 is incredible. It's one of only three lenses, zoom lenses, that I've called a perfect zoom lens. Not that there's any such thing as a perfect lens. But I took that into consideration. Um, between the focal ranges of about 18 millimeters. Uh, to about uh, 75 millimeters plus. That, that lens is amazing. It's small, it's fast, it's lightweight, it has optical image stabilization. The bokeh on it is amazing. For an F4 lens, the bokeh on it is incredible. I called that a perfect zoom lens for a very, very good reason. And that takes into consideration what Fujifilm does that absolutely everybody else does, including Icon and Canon also. Yes, including Olympus. Mm hmm it depends on the lens, there's a greater and lesser degrees of this, but it means that for marketability, the more of a focal range you include, you know, the more people's eyes get, well, well you know, that covers a really wide focal. 
I'm gonna get that lens. But you actually have to consider what it is. A 16 to 80 is super best roughly between 18 millimeters and uh, 75 millimeters. Um, a 24 to 120, the new Nikkor is awesome at roughly 38 millimeters to 100 and 105 millimeters, which is still quite a range. But there's also a reason why primes exist, yeah? This is a super important part of lens attributes and qualities that must be intelligently, logically considered. It's called seeing the forest for the trees, you know? Just like you can't judge a hot rod by how much coal it can haul, you know, or how much, you know, how it could go up muddy roads. It's like the same sort of stupidity where people were chirping when Fujifilm came out with medium format cameras. Like, oh my God, this camera's slow. <laughs> In a medium format is a heavy earth mover, if you will. It is not designed for sports action wildlife. It's designed for making those big ass prints with high megapixels it, when you bring them up on a high, on like a, a, a 5K display. Oh my God, look at that image, it's incredible. It's designed for that. So people need to make uh, intelligent, logical decisions. I take the totality of what a lens is. And when I said that lens was uh, is a, uh, a legendary lens, and a perfect zoom lens, which is, seems contradictory to perfect prime lenses, but no lens is perfect, zoom or prime. But, you know, I, not only do I stand behind that, I have just explained to you why people are so confused. They get extremely polarized, especially when it comes to zoom lenses. I got, oh my God, I take this lens to its far range and it's not super, super sharp. It's like, uh, that's right, because this 18 to 135 is awesome between 20 millimeters and 130 millimeters. Every zoom lens is like that. That covers a significant focal range. Everyone! Some to a greater degree, some to a lesser degree. I take all that into consideration. And intelligent, logical, sound-minded people do and should. Yes, and this is how an accurate lens review is done. You take the totality of what something is. You know, you evaluate it logically, and then you uh, post conclusions in a final review. Not based on affiliate links, hopefully so, which I'm the only guy that doesn't do that, so. At least I'm the only big one that doesn't do that on YouTube, so. Yeah, you just got an education on a really, really, really important part of lenses that nobody else is talking about, has talked about. It's important taking into consideration the totality totality of what something is. Yeah. And all zoom lenses, uh, they, uh, that's one of their attributes. It's because it's called marketability. Yep. Thank you so much for watching. I like the score on my cheek there, yeah. Cut myself. Happy holidays, Snovum Godum. Feliz Navidad, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, all that stuff. Yeah. 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 Wait for it. Wait for it.